these Daniel Defense AR-15s shoot so good. If you're in the market for an upscale AR, you don't want to put one together, don't hesitate pulling the trigger on Daniel Defense. They are that good. In a summer of fails for gun testing, there have been several notable ones, watch the videos. It was refreshing. I mean, I was totally stoked to do this tabletop because I have pretty much nothing bad to say about this V7 version. And then previously last year, we shot a DDM4 V11. That was Bad's gun. And that one shot really good. So to say that I'm thoroughly impressed by these ARs that Daniel puts together is a true statement. Totally am. I'll say this too, and there's a lot of things that go into this formula, but I'm going to break out four right now. Because I want to start off talking about the quality level uh, of the barrel that Daniel Defense DD puts together. To shoot accurately, whether it's an AR or whatever, the way I look at it, you need four basic things. You need a good shooter, you need a good rest, you need good ammunition, and you need a good barrel. I said that when I did that video right there, building the best AR-15 in the world. You know, kind of tongue-in-cheek title to that video, and go watch it. It's talking about my approach to building, what con concepts that I look to, my philosophy of use, components that I currently used in those builds. We may bounce to that gun later. The barrel that this DD has on it is ultra high quality. It is made right here in the United States, Black Creek, Georgia. It is cold hammer forged. I think it would stack up against any other barrel I've put on the table, including this BCM up there. That's a BCM lightweight barrel, which is a superb quality barrel. It's excellent and it's shot just as good as this one. I have shot medium quality AR barrels. I've shot low quality ones and you can definitely tell a difference. The AR platform, at least the DI platform, is inherently accurate. You almost have to screw it up for it to not shoot accurately. A good way to screw it up is to put a less than super high quality barrel on it. Says me. DD doesn't have that problem. Now, the one thing you'll notice, and I have mentioned this before in a lot of videos over the years here in TMP, is that it is an M4 profile barrel, and that's their specialty. They've always stuck with it. I'm not a super fan of the M4 profile, and that just means that under the handguard here, it's going to taper down once upon a time to uh, incorporate a grenade launcher. That's not to say it's really handicapped in any way. In my testing, that just did not show itself to be true at all. Even when the barrel heated up, I didn't see any stringing, vertical, or horizontal, and we shot this gun a fair amount. Steel and brass case ammo, just for testing process. You can see the barrel here. And this gun is dirty, by the way. I mean, we took it in the desert mountains. Uh, we worked it. And I'm going to show you some video of that. And I think I'll just scrounge out some video of the V11 from Bad and I testing it. Same location, incidentally. Don't know how that worked out. So, yeah, it actually looks pretty sick, all dirty like that. So, you can see it tapers down. This is responsible more than anything. You see how narrow that, that barrel is right through here? Standard M4 profile. And then it thickens to 0.75, you know, up to the gas block and beyond. Uh, That's be cool. responsible for the gun's super lightweight at an amazing, really amazing out-of-the-box factory AR-15 at 6 pounds, 3 ounces without optic. That's running a Gemtech titanium on there. I've got a silicone guard on it. I'm not taking it off for the review because it's too much of a hassle. And the whole testing protocol here was ran with that. I just, I mean, sometimes I run it without a can, sometimes I put a can on it, and once the can goes on, I almost hate taking it on and off, and so I didn't. So all the testing was done with the suppressor on it. That's a great suppressor, by the way. It's super light, compact. It does enough attenuation that I think it gets the job done, and it really keeps the whole system lightweight and portable. But man, is that a good barrel. I, I'm impressed. It runs awesome. Also, I would really like to be able to find my footage of when I visited with Daniel Defense. And I forget the dude's name. We had a great visit together. Um, and he talked to me about how they do produce a lot of things in-house. And how, if I, my memory serves, they actually are farming out parts to other makers that buy from DD. And they're marketed under another name. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what he told me at the time. The barrel is the perfect example. I, I'm always a fan of a CHF, uh, CHF process. I said that 
way back when in the Arsenal SGL 2131 review in the AK Gold Standard video, uh, those Russian guns also use cold hammer forging. One in seven twist, it is uh, technically a government profile, I guess, maybe not M4. Mid-length gas system on that. Oh, I love mid-length gas systems. I'm not a fan of the carbon, carbon length, if I can get away with it. Chrome lined, of course, MP tested, and heavy phosphate coating on it, the barrel. Super quality. Now, I don't want to start this video and just act like DD is, all, is the only one putting together a great AR. There are so many. But what I want to do is, is basically suck less in the review <laughs> and represent the gun accurately. And they get it done well. Uh, obviously threaded, standard threading. And did I bring it up? I may have forgotten the, the muzzle device that it had on there. And it was a standard muzzle device. They call it the Daniel Defense Flash Suppressor. I'll throw in a screenshot or a photo. I just took it off to put the can on. There is no compensation with this. It's made out of 17.4 stainless steel. And that one is nitride finished. I weighed it, by the way. I'm talking about the muzzle device. And it was a very light A2-ish 2.2 ounces. Um, by A2, I mean, I think an, an M16 A2 flash hider weighs about like that, 2.2. And it's kind of my standard. Because if, if a muzzle device goes over that, then I kind of like go, uh... You know, do it depends on what we're doing. If you're in a competition or something, three gun, then absolutely more weight up here is actually good. That one, there is a, that is a battle comp. I'm trying to remember which version of battle comp that is, and that's even lighter. It's like 1.8, something insane like that. Handguard, we're kind of going front, and working our way back, and this should be a relatively concise review because I'm going to go super light on PAOU. You ready? Philosophy of use is standard. <laughs> question <laughs> that's it uh because you guys have been doing this so long most of you guys have been following me for a while you know what it is it's a defensive carbine uh recreational gun go to war gun wrol whatever you want to call it we got it handguard is a dd mfrxs this is a 15 inch handguard 6061 t6 and it's got a, a really solid attachment system to it there's one bad thing about it though, and we noticed this out of the box. Uh, let's see if it's still evident here. It's not really evident here. When we got out of the box, this actually was not aligned with the upper. It was just a little bit tweaked, and I, I thought about taking it off and, and aligning it, and, and through the testing process, it did it itself, which is hilarious. And no, there's no twisting or movement, so you, you may say, well, if it did that, then it's probably going to twist off. No, I didn't detect any movement at all in it. But one bad thing I will say is if you want to take this off, and when I was attempting to do so, there are four screws here, and I and one immediately stripped out. So that's not great. So I would like to actually see something more user-friendly if and when a dude wants to take uh, you know, his handguard off. Is it doable? Yeah, I, I don't know. The other screws came out just fine. It's just that one that kind of stripped out. Uh, always look very carefully at this junction right here because it's a, it's where a lot of manufacturers screw it up. They may be attempting to dissipate heat. POF has something like that, although I think POF's current heat dissipation attachment system for their handguards is pretty smart. It's lightweight, um, but I, I think they can add a lot of weight here if they're not careful. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, LWRC, I think, adds a little bit of weight with their attachment system. I think Barrett does as well. This one I don't think does because the overall weight is 6.3, like I said, without optics. Narrow, narrow handguard. M-lock capable handguard. I, I really love the handguard. And the beauty of the DD, uh, and I got for a review this V7 because I just liked it. It's, it kind of represented a mid-range gun. 16-inch barrel, it's not really an SPR, but it's a good all-arounder, right? Good choice, kind of right smack dab in the middle of their line. And it was available, so I was like, yeah, let's let's do that V7. We'll see how it is. And then the V11 Bad's gun was even really even better looking because it has that super cool, the bronze finish on it, kind of the FDE bronze on it. Super cool. The theme I was going to say, though, on the whole gun is you really don't have to swap out anything. Uh, maybe the trigger. But other than that, I wouldn't change this handguard. And that's probably the biggest showstopper for me. 
back in the day when I bought ARs, whether it's Rock River, I mean, the handguards were just jacked, jacked up. But really nice handguard, standard pick rail on the top, painting of the gas block, all the mill spec quality features you'd expect from DD, they're in here. Totally in here. Um, God, look how freaking dirty that is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had it in the dirt, windstorm kicked up, it just happens. And it was kind of wet when it happened, so it got coated. Uh, I'd probably just leave it like this, it just looks so insane. Uh, the receiver, standard, a uh, forged receiver. I've always been of the mindset, and you can see the stamping there for the forge to put that one together. I've always been of the mindset for these guns that I like forged. You know, billet is cooler, it's tactical, but... It, I see very few instances where a billet receiver does not add weight. Standard position, AR safety, all this is normal AR. Uh, charging handles normal. You might want to put on aftermarket char charging handle. I think most guys do nowadays. Most do. Uh, can I run with it like this? Uh, myself, you just look at my own guns. This is a C Products mag. Yep, C Products. Great magazines, by the way. I love C Products stuff. They're excellent. Uh, and it also came with its own 32 round Daniel Defense magazine, which I forgot to test. So, wah, wah, yellow follower, I like that. It's not translucent. Kind of a got, uh, got a larger base plate on it. Lightweight, uh, they've entered the market too. I mean, there's so many excellent magazines. It's just crazy how many options we have. It's really great, a great time, isn't it? Uh, the trigger's not awesome. It's very, you know, military-like. Uh, I don't have my trigger scale here. It wandered off. I have no idea where it went. <laughs> but I'll find it and I'll annotate it there at the top of the screen. But I remember pulling it and during shooting and it sucks. It, it, it's not a great trigger. It's a standard mil speckish AR trigger, which some guys swear by. I don't. I always will put in something lighter for faster rates of fire. That's just how I go. Um, the bolt and the guts of the beer, bolt, bolt carrier group are excellent. The same military specification type features, MPI, uh, all that good stuff. Proper staking of the gas key. Uh, so super quality. It's an M16 bolt carrier, if you like that. Uh, DI. You know, no piston here, of course. Standard magazine release. What is not standard is right here, and I think they're doing it to save weight. The pistol grip of the, at least this V7 model of the Daniel Defense M4 has an integrated trigger guard to it. Now, that's good and it's bad. It's good that it saves weight. It's bad because if you want to put on something like a, a Magpul or a different variation, maybe a Tango Down, then you, you know, you might, you're you going to have to put something right here. You know, just put in a standard and large trigger guard because it does, of course, have the place for it uh, in the lower it looks like. Okay. Rubber, rubber, ov I can't speak. Rubber over molding on both the pistol grip and the buttstock, which I'm going to level with you. I just don't like. I don't like any rubberish crap on my guns or anything because they just grab beard hair, they grab clothing, they grab LBE. Um, I didn't notice it to be a problem. I'm going to be honest with you. During the testing, it shot extremely well. And not once did I say, "Oh, this is a this is really annoying." It's not. It, it kind of reminds me if I go to Lowe's or somewhere to buy a tool, and they always feel like nowadays they have to cover it in rubber, right? Um, okay, cool, we'll cover it in rubber, but what I've noticed is in my tool kit, kit it just picks up so much dust and oil and, and dirt over the years. It looks like crap as years go on. Uh, not really a player for this, especially in black color, but if it was in light color, like a light tan, a light gray like this one, which is, I think, snow gray, then it'll show. Is it more comfortable? Again, I don't need it. I think a standard Magpul, either a Mission First a grip, works great. Easy enough to swap out if it annoys you. Good staking on the castle nut here. It is a mil spec tube back here. And we did weigh these. Uh, if you put on it Mission First stock, you'll save two ounces over this. I think this is like eight ish. And the MFT stock Battle Link is like six. And this is 3.3, .3, which is pretty light in case you care. Your sling attachment, if you're running single points, you can see the cups right here along the rail. Boom, boom, one back here. And the stock was fine. It's super uh, like tight stock. I mean, not much movement at all, at least that we noticed. Uh, one of these days, i got to tell you guys what mount this is. I know guys are wondering. I bought it off Brownells. It's a super great mount. The only thing I've, 
I found that you have to do is you really have to crank it down because the scope will slide. And this is a tester Burris that we just use. I tried to sell it and put it in our web store actually and no one will buy it. So I'm like, you know what? We're just going to use that as a tester scope. And it's a great scope. It's a 4x14. And for accuracy testing, it just rocked the freaking house. It's a big, bright uh, MOA adjustment. So I much prefer that over mill, like I've said. That's just me. Um, there you go. Speaking of accuracy, and this is a 5.56 chambered rifle, in case you're wondering. I think most everything DD puts together is like that. Uh, remember the four things I talked about? Shooter, you know, good ammunition, a good rest, and then uh, the barrel, right? Well, when all those things come together, you get something like... Uh, I guess I'll start you off back last year. Actually, one year, almost exactly one year. This is a DD v11 i should have that footage uh the thing is we were only shooting with a four power leopold that day because of what black army dude had and uh it's just what he put on there because i think his philosophy of use on his gun is kind of close range like 100 yards in and we really didn't have a really great stand i think we're shooting off the field uh the field pod up there i don't remember but with all of that four power in field conditions uh, and I think this is bad shooting. He did pretty good. Look at that. So that's tacticalammunition.com. Thanks, thanks to them for continuing to sponsor the Nutton Fancy Project. They allow me to shoot these guns a lot more. Really accurate ammunition. My only downside on them is their, their powder doesn't go so great in the cold weather. At least the way they used to load it. Um, but they support us and we're appreciative and grateful. Uh, that group's not so great. Tactical Ammunition 55 grain. Shooting pretty good pretty good that's a good group but wait it gets better so now we fast forward to this this year and I went to a range proper with a concrete rest it's this very gun right here that you're looking at hey nothing fancy what you know what bullet fragments are those uh, I think it's nine mil yeah nine mil that I recovered out of some water years ago it's just kind of I don't know table decoration <laughs> 100 yards, this is just a couple days ago. I'm shooting off a plastic rest because I drove the KTM to the range. I didn't want to take a car. Fiocchi 77 grain. This kind of wasn't as good as I hoped, but it's still pretty damn good. And I think I, I shanked a pull. That's why I have a question mark here. But here we go. Look at that. Four things. Uh, DD's got it going on, and I did my part. And then there's IMI Razor 77 shooting into uh, sub MOA, it looks like. That's sub MOA out of what could be considered a rack grade AR-15. I'm gonna take a little aside here because it's interesting. I've done some other reviews and I, if a gun does not shoot accurately, it really kind of irritates me at this point because there's no excuse for it. It just means there's sub-quality components going in. Now granted, I'll have a bad day sometimes, but maybe I give it to another shooter and it's like, hey, you try it and see if it's me or the gun, and then they come away with the same results. We're like, okay, it's the gun. Especially if it's high price level, and I had some reviews this summer that I said as much. So this is what I'm talking about: how an AR shoots well. This Hornady Nozzer 55 grain stuff, the partition stuff. Damn, I mean that's shooting basically just over half him away, dudes. There's IMI Razor again. There's Federal Gold Medal Match. Surprisingly, coming in at well over MOA. That's more like uh, probably an inch and a three quarters I think I was not happy with that I don't know why gold metal match usually shoots extremely well well there's I give it another shot that's about MOA maybe a little bit larger Fiocchi 77 grain Fiocchi puts together some really wickedly accurate consistent ammunition I love it wish I had like a bazillion rounds of it and then it just got better I mean you'll see in the footage I'll give a thumbs up when I'm shooting and it's because I'm like, I'm stoked. I'm like, I'm looking through the glass. I'm like, yes, a gun that freaking performs. Thank you. I mean, yeah, it's an expensive gun. It's a U.S. produced, expensive, major league player in the AR-15 world. But it's living up to its, its reputation. And we've seen some other big names that have come to the table, and they haven't. Man, good job, DD. I'm just so happy. I'm so happy. Uh, this is the same thing, same range, same plastic rest. Shooting with a Gemtech uh, Trek Titanium can on it. Tightened up, make sure there's no movement. TAC A55 shooting uh, MOA, dude. All day long. All day long. And this is off a damn plastic rest. Look at this. That's just over MOA. This is 55 grain non-match ball. PMC shooting pretty good. 
right there, right there. Not as good as tacticalammunition.com. Look at that. PMC. It was consistent. TAC A, there's one bad group. And I'll end with this one. 55 grain TAC A, dude. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, it freaking excites me, man. I get excited <laughs> because I love to see a gun shoot well. Incidentally, that is the Griffin uh, boot knife from CutleryShop.com Jeff put together. That's a sick blade. Reviewed probably four years ago. This is the FFG version, just in case you're wondering. Uh, very well priced, actually, for what you're getting in a superior quality Kydex sheath, in case you're wondering. I did say the theme for the gun is, is it's so squared away as it comes, you probably won't have to swap out anything. I said you, not me. If I were to keep the gun, I would swap a couple things out. Uh, surprisingly, I would not immediately swap the buttstock, buttstock out or the pistol grip. Now that may surprise you because I was giving some criticism to it for the rubber coating, and that's true. But I don't think it's really adding that much weight it's more cost that you put into it. It is a rather expensive AR, I think. Down the line, uh, I would probably put in a, a, you know, a different charging handle, and I would definitely put something in the trigger. So many great trigger options. I mean, the Geisley shoot good. What do I have in this one? And this is, again, my build. Um, so many guns, so little time. I forget what I have in it, to be honest with you. Which brings us to the point... Uh, we're talking about accessorizing and actually we'll just jump in and dovetail into value and options. I really wonder these days how the ready-made AR guys are selling their guns because I think most of us are actually grabbing the components we want and putting together our own guns. I'm not going to sell that as the end-all way to uh, you know, achieve greatness with your AR. It is one way and I'll tell you this, go watch this gun in action. This is probably my favorite AR-15 I've ever shot to put together by myself and I have an SPR upper that I'll plug right into it, it has an 18 inch barrel nice. and it shoots half of my way with good ammo uh, but the thing is when you put it together a Franken gun you don't have a warranty if something goes wrong and I said this all the way back in 08, 09 then you're on your own you gotta fix it because no one else is there to help you you know, but the upside is you get exactly what you want. I got uh, this represents exactly what I want. MFT, Magpul. You know, I got a freaking all types of toys on here, man. Tactical latches. I've got my M bus. I've got a BCM rail on it. Go watch the video. This though is pretty, pretty squared away. The DDV. Uh, I'm sorry, DDM4V7. A great gun. Uh, it's going to be pricey. I'm not going to throw out a price. You can look it up for yourself. Uh, but the upside is you get the warranty, the backing up of uh, Danny Defense. And honestly, most reputable AR-15 companies will do exactly the same. You have a lot of great options. I'm not going to go through the litany of high-quality AR-15 manufacturers. You can look it up. We've been doing this for a while, so I'm not really going to give you all the competitive options. Uh, value is in the eye of the beholder. For that, is it worth it? Um, I would say yeah, uh, from what I saw. I mean, we had, by the way, absolutely zero malfunctions with this gun. It chugged steel all day long, no problem. And we're talking the low quality, intermittent wolf ammo. And I like running some of that because it does test a system, whether it's a, a, uh, you know, a direct gas impingement gun or a, a piston gun, it should run steel. I've always said that. I think most people are agreeing, in agreement with that because they understand the nature of it testing the system because I think a good system should be adaptable to a wide range of pressures that ammunition which the gun may see in service. Brass, steel, high pressure, low pressure. And the beauty of a DI system versus a lot of the piston guns is you don't have to tweak it. I've always said the KISS principle is my favorite. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, if I have something I have to dick around with and tweak, whether it's on a DI system or whatnot, then I love the SIG MCX, but it's like that. You know, it kind of puts questions in your mind. And if you're shooting other systems and then you go back to that gun, you go, well, where's my gas system? You don't really remember the specifics on it. You know, I think that's an, an understandable confusion. DI is simple, dude. It's simple. Yeah, you're gonna have to clean it, clean the bolt carry group. Well, we've all been doing it so long, it doesn't matter. When you get the quality levels that DD's using, yeah. It's like military spec, dude. It'll, it'll run, 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 run. And that, by the way, is a lot of the cost. The CHF, Made in America, the magnetic particle inspection, all the processes that, the, that assures this level of quality, 
takes money. It takes time. And so you're paying for that. Um, I've always said that it, you know if you're willing to pay the price, get it. This is a great gun. I really have very few reservations on it at all. A minor thing with the handguard, but that's uh, very tweakable. The rest is very well done. Same with the V11, by the way. I looked at that one, and all along the, the AR-15 line that Daniel does, superb job, then fancy. Right in the hole, that one.